player to ever win the Ballon d'Or, even younger than Lionel Messi when he first won it at 22 years old. But what's crazy is for someone who achieved so much back then at a young age, when you look at his career now, you might even wonder just how the hell did this 21-year-old kid convince everyone that he was the best player in the world? And just what did ever happen to him? How did he go from being on top of the footballing world to being almost completely disregarded in such a short amount of time? Well, today, we're here to take a look. Let's bring it back to the iconic 1998 World Cup match between England and Argentina, in which David Beckham was sent off the match and would later be blamed and hated for his country's exit. However, just a few moments before that iconic moment would happen, an 18-year-old rising star named Michael Owen would make an incredible run and score one of the greatest individual goals in English international history. This match made an English hero of Michael Owen and put him on the spotlight, while for David Beckham, on the other hand, it was a source of much hate and regret. However, now, over two decades later, the football world remembers David Beckham in a much higher light and regard, while the young prodigy Owen, who at the time people honestly thought would turn out to be one of the greatest players to ever hail from England, has seemingly turned into an afterthought altogether. Owen's performance showed exactly why everyone would see him as head and shoulders above the rest of the most exciting young players in the world. His speed, touch, and finishing were that of a veteran star. And while the international community was shocked by the youngster's performance, for Premier League and Liverpool fans especially, this was nothing new. It was exactly what you'd expect from someone who finished their first full season with Liverpool, scoring 23 goals and providing 14 assists in 44 matches, having 0.85 goal contributions per game at the age of 18. He would make headlines all throughout the season as a teenager who was ripping through Premier League defenses week after week and becoming a goal-scoring machine. Because as a teenager, Michael Owen won the Premier League Golden Boot and was awarded the PFA Young Player of the Year award, bringing his name and hype slowly up to a global superstar level at such a young age. Owen was a prodigy and all eyes were on the young striker, and Liverpool knew that they had to keep their young star, so they would sign him under a 5 year, 2.5 million pound deal, which looking back at it isn't exactly much, especially compared to the prices we see players at today. But it definitely wasn't bad for a kid who in the US wouldn't even be old enough to buy alcohol yet. And back then, Owen was the highest paid teenager in the history of British football. Owen also finished as runner-up to no other than Zinedine Zidane for the World Player of the Year award in 1998. Just imagine if a 19-year-old had nearly beat Messi or Ronaldo for the Ballon d'Or in the prime of their career. That was basically the same impact back then to finish behind Zinedine Zidane, who had just won the World Cup and was the unquestionable best player in the world at the time. This just gives you a small glimpse of the hype behind the young Michael Owen. Michael Owen was just so insane that you really just had to be there in person to see it. Because if you didn't, you really wouldn't believe it. And you need to make sure that you aren't one of those people who miss out on some must-see events. That's why today's sponsor, SeatGeek, has you covered. With over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app, and there are more than 70,000 events happening every single day on SeatGeek, including sports, concerts, festivals, and many more. For example, with SeatGeek, you can make sure that you have the chance to witness Lionel Messi play before he retires, or get a chance to watch Drake while he's on tour. And with SeatGeek's rating system, you can quickly see which tickets are a good deal, the green ones or a bad deal, the red ones. SeatGeek is safe, easy, and a guaranteed way to get the best deals for whatever tickets you need. Plus, every ticket is backed by their buyer guarantee, and SeatGeek is the only site to let you return your tickets ahead of the event with swaps. And right now, SeatGeek has come through for you guys, because you can use my code RAYMAR for $20 off your first purchase. That's right, $20 off your first purchase with promo code RAYMAR. So make sure you click the link in the description and download SeatGeek today. Thanks to SeatGeek for sponsoring this video. Then the very following 1998-1999 Premier League season, despite suffering from a hamstring injury that would end his season early, Michael Owen still somehow managed to win back-to-back -back Premier League Golden Boots, scoring the same amount of goals in fewer matches with 23 goals and 7 assists in 40 matches, a 0.75 goal contributions per game. And even though other strikers played more matches than him, Owen still managed to score the most in the league. 
Incredibly amazing for the 20 year old. But what exactly was it that made Owen such an exceptional striker? If you had to break it down to one thing, many would agree it would ultimately come down to his lightning fast pace. Because in just a matter of seconds, a perfectly placed through ball would see Owen from a static position to a full blown sprint in a matter of split seconds, leaving any defender behind him in the dust. However, in the 1999-2000 season, 20-year-old Owen's body would already start to decline, as he would suffer a hamstring injury that would put him out for almost half a year. There was even an article regarding Owen's injury written by ESPN, in which they would say Owen's speed was just too much for his hamstrings to handle because by the time January would come around, he would only play a total of four matches. And unsurprisingly, he would be unable to three-peat the Premier League Golden Boot, which would have been absolutely legendary if he was able to pull it off at the age of 21. Because later in the season, he would once again receive another hamstring injury. And without their star striker, Liverpool was going nowhere, both in the Premier League and the Champions League. But despite the serious lack of playing time, Owen still managed to score 12 goals that season. Then finally, in 2001, things would start looking good for Owen in Liverpool, as they would go on to win three pieces of silverware in the 2000-2001 season, with a League Cup title, FA Cup title, and UEFA Cup or modern day Europa League title, ending a six year drought for the club. That combined with 24 goals and eight assists in 46 matches, would somehow earn Michael Owen the 2001 Ballon d'Or making him the first English player to receive the award since Kevin Keegan in 1979. So somehow the 21 year old Michael Owen convinced everyone that he was the best player in the world, beating Raul and Oliver Kahn for the award. With many believing that the deciding factor for Owen's victory was the fact that during the 2001 FA Cup final, Michael Owen would score two clutch goals being down 1-0 until the final 10 minutes of the match. A flip would switch in Michael Owen and he would become incredibly clutch, scoring an equalizing goal in the 83rd minute, then scoring the game-winning goal in the 88th minute, five minutes later, to help his team come back from certain defeat at the hands of Arsenal which regardless if you like the decision or not, made him the second youngest to ever win the Ballon d'Or, behind only Ronaldo the Phenomenon at 22 years old and four days, which basically meant that he proved to everyone that he deserved the award while he was 21 years old. And in my opinion, the strangest thing about his Ballon d'Or win was it wouldn't even be Michael Owen's best individual year for Liverpool, with the only difference being that Liverpool won three pieces of silverware that year. And come on, we're all told that the award should be individually based, but we all know the criteria is never consistent throughout every year, with some using team success as a metric and others solely using individual performance as a metric. And we all know how the English media loves to overhype players, especially today, with so many memes of how a player would be worth more if they were English, or simply cost more if they are being signed in a Premier League squad. But it's beyond a doubt that at the time, many thought that Owen would become even better and better as he got older. Older, and perhaps this award was a consolation prize to award just how good the young prodigy was and all the things he's managed to achieve in the Premier League at that young of an age. And the following 2001-2002 season, although Liverpool would finish second in league standings, they would go on to win the Charity Shield and UEFA Super Cup, with Owen having his most efficient season yet, scoring 28 goals and having 9 assists in 43 matches, a 0.86 goal contributions per game. Michael Owen was 22 years old and basically averaging that on a seasonal basis, and for the Premier League, especially around that time, was incredibly respectable. Then came 2002, when Papa Florentino Perez of Real Madrid had started to set his eyes on the young superstar, and it was a quite well-known fact that Perez was looking to sign the very best players and have them all play for Real Madrid in what has become known as the Galacticos campaign. And just to give you an exact idea of how hyped and valued Michael Owen was at the time, then Liverpool manager Gerard Houllier said, Real Madrid might be able to afford Ronaldo, but they can't afford Michael Owen for that kind of money. They could only buy his left foot, huh? but he's not going anywhere. Which in hindsight was a completely ridiculous statement, but at the time surprisingly did not seem that far-fetched. But hilariously enough, not even two seasons later, Real Madrid would eventually get their hands on Michael Owen. He would wear the number 11 and play alongside Ronaldo, Roberto Carlos, Luis Figo, Zinedine Zidane, and English teammate David Beckham League, and the noticeable peak and decline of his physicality and fitness. Because in his final season for Liverpool, Michael Owen would go through what he describes as three months of injury nightmare, which would put him in poor form even going nine months without scoring a single goal. 
But hilariously enough, the season that Owen would sign with Real Madrid would be the same season that Liverpool would go on to win the Champions League title, while Real Madrid would get bounced in the round of 16 and signed with Newcastle United. However, just a few months into the season, Owen would break his metatarsal bone in a match against Tottenham and would have to undergo surgery, putting him out for several months. But unfortunately, even so, he would take several additional more months off, as his injury had not healed correctly and would require a second surgery. And just when Owen thought he had finally recovered after missing the entire season, he would try his luck playing for his country in the 2006 World Cup, where he would tear his ACL in the group stages against Sweden just after a few minutes into the match. That is just insanely unlucky. I mean, in two years with Newcastle United, he would make a total of 14 appearances combined, being unable to play football for an entire year's worth of time just from those two major injuries alone. That lightning fast pace, agility, and mobility that made Owen so deadly in front of goal was long gone. And over the next few seasons, he would still continue to suffer a string of minor injuries. And finally, in the 2009-10 season, Owen had been desperate enough to try to get back in form and save what little was left of his career by joining his former club's rivals, Manchester United. But despite Owen being a massive shell of his former self, he would go on to have a decent 9 goals and 2 assists in 31 matches in his debut season. Then the very next season, despite rarely any playing time, with him only scoring 5 goals in 17 matches, Owen would finally be able to lift the first and only Premier League title of his entire career with Manchester United. But even then, in his next two final years in the Premier League, Owen would continue to suffer a string of minor injuries, only making 13 appearances in his final two seasons. So thus, after the 2012-13 season, Michael Owen would finally decide to retire at 34 years old. It's really sad to see how injuries ruined one of the most exciting young footballers in the world, because it was an established fact that Owen was indeed a monster in his young prime. If only he had stayed healthy, he might very well have been seen as the greatest English footballer of all time. But unfortunately, Owen would lose that pace and mobility that made him so deadly. And even despite his great touch, his legs were overall destroyed from the incredible amount of injuries he suffered year after year. But despite all that, Michael Owen will be remembered as one of the greatest young stars who ever played.